I'm Emma Louise Coffey and you're welcome to The Dairy Age, the Chagas Dairy Podcast. We're bringing you the latest information, insights and opinion to improve dairy farm performance. On this week's show, we're focusing on feeding the dairy cow in early lactation and we hear from Aidan Lawless, farm manager from Chagas Johnstown Castle. But first, Brian Gary, nutrition specialist from Chagas, explains the changing energy demands in early lactation. Well, at this time of the year, I suppose dry cows in, in month nine of uh, gestation would have an energy requirement of somewhere in the region between eight to nine UFLs per day. And I suppose this is kind of easily no, easy enough met by ad lib silage in, in, in majority situations. But um, I suppose when the cow calves down, obviously the milk production uh, process starts and that will require a, a large amount of energy to be transitioned to that. So I suppose when we look at the actual energy requirements of cows that are lactating, you'll be looking for a cow producing about 20 litres up on 14 to 15 UFLs a day, whereas higher yielding cows that are producing up on 26, 27 litres, they will be requiring up on 16, 17 litres a day, uh, um, close after... Or, after calving. So I suppose from that point of view, we need to be able to transition the cows onto that uh, diet that is of a higher energy. Uh, and I suppose that comes down to their energy intake, uh, which is down to the feed quality and the amount of that feed that they're eating. In terms of their intake at this time, so as we say, they're transitioning uh, from dry to milk. Um, what are the limitations in terms of their intake at this time? So I suppose dry cows, I suppose they would have an intake somewhere in the region of about 10 kilos of dry matter to 11 to 12 kilos of dry matter a day. And I suppose at the point of calving down, the size of the fetus or, or, or the calf growing inside the animal will restrict their intake slightly. So we know once the cow calves down, then her intake will increase rapidly from that point onwards uh, up to about week 8 to 10 of lactation. And I suppose the rule of thumb is that a cow will increase her intake roughly by one kilogram a day. Uh, or one kilogram per week, depending on, I suppose, the cow's genotype and so forth. So in that situation, you would say a cow will start off on about 10 kilos of dry matter in, in week one. In week two, you will be on 11 kilograms of dry matter for that cow. Uh, for week three, you're on to 12, so forth, until the cow reaches her threshold somewhere in the region of 18, to, between 18 and 19 kilos, depending on the type of cow you have. Smaller cows might be down towards 17 kilos. And I suppose the rule of thumb there for farmers, if they wanted to uh, work out where their own cows would lie in that situation. If you have a mature body weight for your cows, somewhere in the region of 3 to 3.2% of the mature body weight is where your cows should be peaking at. And from that point of view, then I suppose if you work backwards from that, you can kind of roughly calculate where the cows should be eating in the first or second week after the calf down. And and with that in mind, Brian, in terms of um, their intake in um, early lactation, what, what's the ideal diet um, that you would subscribe for cows in early lactation? Well, I suppose in early lactation, the cow has a large number of, I suppose, requirements. So you have energy requirements, uh, you have restricted intake, and I suppose the other thing then you have, I suppose, you have a protein requirement, uh, and they're probably the main ones you need to get right. So in terms of milky, or the milk production and, and the diet the cow needs for that, uh, you're looking at getting high energy diets in, if at all possible. So I suppose the most cost effective way of doing this is to include grass uh, and spring grass in, in the cow's diet, because we know that spring grass is a very, very high quality grass. Uh, it's very high in energy value, and it also comes with more than enough protein to meet the cow's requirements. So if we have spring grass in the diet of the cow, we can reduce our other feeds uh, accordingly. So I suppose just out of interest, I suppose for in terms of a total diet specification, you would be looking at the region of somewhere about 0.95 or thereabout of a UFL per kilogram of dry matter intake that the cow will be uh, consuming. So to put that in, in perspective, I suppose spring grass has a UFL value in excess of one. So we know that spring grass is more than enough energy to meet the cow's uh, energy requirements. And I suppose there's potential there to, to have additional milk produced if we can get enough of that grass into the cow's diet. I suppose if you look nationally at our silage quality across the board, uh, silage quality would be in the region maybe 0.8 of UFL for, for, for decent to, to, to good quality pit silage. Um, and I suppose you can see the difference then between the quality of the grass uh, and the silage in that situation. So I suppose if we can get spring grass into the cow's diet, we will help to be able to, I suppose, produce milk at a cost-effective base and meet the cow's energy requirements. I suppose the other thing to bear in mind in the spring is that we don't want to burn too much condition off cows, so the cows will not be able to eat enough to meet the requirements. So we need to keep that phase that they are in that negative energy balance for as short a period of time as possible. 
and in term and uh, following on from you know you're talking about the grass and silage um what what other feedstuffs do farmers tend to feed in early lactation um to dairy cows you know if grass is limiting well, I suppose, and, g- and given the year that's in it, I suppose there may be a big problem on, on certain farms across the country where the, uh, silage uh, stocks might be in poor supply and, and conditions mightn't be suitable for grazing. And so I suppose in those situations, you're looking at getting a high quality ration in is probably your first, uh, uh, I suppose, your first uh, choice in that situation from a cost point of view. So I suppose you're looking at that from, uh, I suppose, depending on whether your cows will be inside or not. Uh, your cows are going to be outside uh, by day and in at night something like a 16% ration a 15-16% ration should be sufficient if you're going to be inside on silage full time you want to be maybe aiming towards an 18-20% to 20% ration and I suppose you're out time full, outside full time you could go with somewhere in the region of a 12-14% to 14% crew protein ration in that point of view I suppose regardless of the type of protein you're going with it is essential that that ration is as high in energy as you can I suppose, uh, uh, purchase at that time so uh, we want that energy to be going there if, if at all possible in terms of balancing the diet, Brian, um, what minerals are really essential in early lactation for dairy cows? So I suppose the, 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 the milking cow, I suppose, is no different than the dry cow, that she does require a certain balance of minerals. And we know for the, the dry cow, it's magnesium is the main one we focus on. But I suppose when we shift into the, I suppose, the lactating period for the cow, the first thing that comes into, I suppose, higher demand is our calcium level goes up. Uh, your phosphorus levels will also increase so your phosphorus to calcium ratio will be uh, they have to be in a ratio so if you're looking at the total i suppose um requirement per kg for the cow you're looking at about maybe seven grams or seven grams of calcium a day and somewhere in the region of four grams of phosphorus a day so you're looking there in somewhere in the region of one and a half to two two is to one ratio from that point of view so i suppose you want to have a balance there i suppose your magnesium is also very important so you want your cows taking in about 30 grams of magnesium especially if they're out on on, on grass in the spring because of the risk of tetany and i suppose then your micro minerals or your smaller trace elements they're very important as well so i suppose they have been linked to i suppose increase immune health and, and f- functions like that so I suppose if you're looking there for your copper somewhere in the region of 30 milligrams per kilogram of of, um, of of dry matter intake and I suppose things like selenium looking at 0. 0.4 f- 4 milligrams uh, and then you're down to something like iodine you're probably looking I suppose 12 milligrams of supplemental iodine per day for that cow so I suppose they're, they're, they're small enough levels but I suppose when you add them up and they should generally come in your concentrate uh, if you're getting a good quality concentrate Perfect. So, Brian, what are your top three tips for feeding dairy cows in early lactation? I suppose, from my point of view, what I see on farms across the country, I suppose, is we need to be able to cash in on our spring grass. I suppose if we could buy spring grass in a bag, we'd all love to buy it because at the cost of, at, uh, at the cost that it is, uh, you cannot buy another feed like it. And it's the highest quality feed you will grow on your farm, uh, bar none. So I suppose from that point of view, we need to try and maximise the use of that on the farm. And I suppose chagas have... Uh, develop tools to allow farmers to do that so things like the spring rotation planner very very important for that point of view and I suppose given the year that's in it farmers may be short of silage and I suppose especially short of high quality silage so in lactating cows you need to make sure that you have as high quality diet as possible so that spring grass should be targeted and, and definitely number one on the list from that point of view I suppose my second point there, I suppose the second tip would be for farmers I suppose can you work out how much dry matter intake per day that your cows are taking in so if we know what the cows should require, how do we know they're actually getting that amount? So I suppose even maybe you're, if, you're, if you're feeding bales, work out how much dry matter is in the bale and divide that by, by the number of cows that you're feeding. Work approximately out how much they're getting in from their silage. Uh, if you're feeding, uh, uh, I suppose, pit silage, how much, uh, how many blocks a day are they eating and how much dry matter is in a block? If you can wait, work it out, uh, I suppose, and then work out then how much your cows are actually getting from that silage from an energy point of view, you can then feed the appropriate amount of concentrate to suit that situation. And I suppose if we have that information at hand, we can make better decisions regarding the, the nutrition of the cows. I suppose on, on farms where um, mig fevers are a problem around the calving time, um, I suppose one tip that some farmers are using, I suppose, is treating of cows that have previously got mig fever or are susceptible to mig fever, so older cows, maybe giving them a calcium bolus at the point of calving if you are, um, I suppose, if you are in a risk situation with high K in your silage or you were maybe a bit dubious about that cow in previous years that she had mig fever. Uh, giving a calcium bolus may help reduce the, um, I suppose, the incidence of mig fever in those situations and then all the associated costs and labour requirements are greatly diminished. So for a small extra effort, you can definitely save a lot of labour down the line.
That's great. Thank you, Brian. Now let's turn our attention to the farmers. This week, I caught up with Aidan Lawless, farm manager of the dairy herd at Chagas Johnstown Castle. And I started by asking him about the structure of the mixed calving herd on the farm. Probably somewhat unusual in that we have more autumn calving cows than spring cows. In, in total, when we'll have them all calved down, we'll have about 145 on the farm. Um, and of that, there'll be 85 of them with the autumn calved, and then about 60 spring calvers. And then... Um, we're running three different herds here then. So we have a 100% autumn calving herd, 100% spring calving herd, and a 50-50 split herd then within those numbers just for the different trials that are going on at the moment. So We're all talking about calving at the moment, but the business of calving is very much over with your autumn herd. I suppose if we just consider the autumn herd, um, what's the number of days in milk for these cows at the moment? Yeah, they're coming up on around 120 days of milk now at the, at the moment. We would mean calving day to around of, uh, 8th of October, I think, their last last autumn. So, we, okay. yeah. And in terms then, what are they producing in terms of milk yield and, and milk solids at the moment? At the moment, they're, 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 they're going pretty well. They're, they're doing about 29 litres at the moment, um, 430 butter fat and about 345, between 340 and 350 protein. So that's working out about 2.2 kilos of milk solids. And they've been fairly consistent at that there now for the last couple of months. So, Okay. Yeah. And, and in terms of what's fueling this, what's the diet of these cows at the moment? Uh, well, the diet at the moment, they're just, it's changing a bit at the moment now because we'll be, we're, we're, we're just getting out the grass we'll, um, uh, over the sort of this week. But um, for the winter, over the last couple of months, their diet would have been to be on mainly uh, nine kilos of grass silage dry matter and then about six kilos of maize silage and then uh, the, uh, they'll be getting about seven and a half kilos of uh, concentrate but five, five kilos of that is in the parlor and then there's about two and a half kilos of a dairy blend just to balance and lift the, the, the protein over the overall diet a little bit with the to balance the maize okay so, and, and and just out of interest um with the diet um what what sort of quality is the si- is the silage in the diet yeah, we're lucky this year. We're, 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 our target every year is to make a, a, a dry matter silage, a good dry matter silage around 25%, and then a DMD of uh, our target is above 75. This year, we, we made an early cut of silage there around 15 to May, and that came in about 75, 76 DMD, um, and it was high dry matter as well. It was just made in ideal conditions. So that's a uh, real rocket fuel for the, the cows, and you could see it in that probably compared to last year, our our milk solids probably lifted by 0.1 or 0.2 with the butter fat and protein just from the, the, the extra good quality silage. Now we're um, just moved off from that in the last couple of weeks onto um, a second cut silage, which isn't quite as good, but it's still 74 DMD and around the 22% dry matter. So and, just and real key. Yeah. And that 74 DMD, would you have a date of when that was cut, Aidan? Uh, that was cut. Um, I, that would have been cut there in early July as a, as a second cut. So it was again, it was, it was early enough for a second cut, but it was just um, and that was more pit silage. We have surplus bales them um, that we would have made off the treatments as well, but we like to hold on to them just yes. if we want to buffer feed them there maybe a bit in the in the spring when we, the main TMR diet is, is finishing up when we're they're out at grass. Yeah, and I suppose that early early silage cut really drives the quality, which would be really important. Um, for your autumn calvers, oh, it's essential. Like that's what we, we need. But and both first and second cut, and we're even we're not that concerned. Sort of uh, even if we have to take a slightly lighter cut, of first cut silage because we're taking a second cut, we'll get it back in the yield in the in the, in the second cut. But it, quality is really our, our first priority for the the autumn calved herd because this it's the it's the main. If you get the silage quality right, it's easy enough to to balance the rest of the diet. Then with the we're still feeding seven to eight kilos of concentrate, so it's a Still, an ex- it's an expensive time of the year to be feeding, but mm. it's a little bit easier if we have a good quality silage. Um, absolutely. So then if we just consider, you know, again, we're, we're not calving at the moment. The, all these cows are on average 120 days in milk. But I suppose you're in the middle of the breeding with your autumn calvers. Um, can you talk us through the, the breeding strategy? You know, what's the length of the breeding season? And is there a mix of AI and the bull um, for breeding these cows? Yeah, you're right. We're sort of slap bang in the middle of it there now at the moment. Hopefully, we've most of the work done at this stage, maybe. But uh, we we start off breeding there in the around the 12th to 14th of uh, December um, with the the autumn calving herd. So with target then to be calving down from around the 20th of September onwards um, the next year. Um, 
uh, that's with the, the 100% autumn calf and herb. So we, 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 we breed for about 12 weeks um, and the first six weeks of that will be all AI uh, to replacement, breeding re- replacements. Um, our, I probably should have said our, our herd average the EBI is around 143. So we're, we're using high EBI bulls. Uh, we still have a target there of sort of um, probably greater than 100 for 130 for fertility around that target and then sort of positive for milk as well. We'd be targeting to be getting about 20 kilos of milk solids. We're feeding a lot of concentrate during the winter there and it's a winter milking herd. So we, we are targeting for a reasonable amount of production, maybe 550 kilos of milk solids. So um, that's the breeding. So we started off, we're in the middle of it now at the moment. We're just switching over to the, the beef bulls at the moment. So um, we have a couple of sweeper bulls that will go in for the, the last six weeks of the breeding season. Um, and with the different herds, sometimes we might end up using some beef AI, but our replacement uh, our sort of AI has finished up there now this week. So the breeding so far has, has gone well enough, but uh, our return rate has, has been low enough. We're probably looking at below maybe... A thirty percent on the sort of the repeat, so we'd be very happy with that if it holds. But we're just we're a little bit too, a bit, little bit cautious at the moment that we won't get some of the, the six or nine week repeats. So hopefully not. Um, yeah. And then, in just to take a step back on that, did, what sort of a submission rate did you achieve with with those cows? Yeah, the submission rate we were well, we we're target we we're always be targeting sort of a, a above ninety percent submission rate, but we didn't we 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 only got around eighty three percent there, so we we're a little bit below that. But um, maybe hopefully the ones that did come and maybe probably more of them have held in other years. That are normally we would be getting around a ninety percent submission rate, but um, we did have a couple of late calvers. But at this stage, all bar one of the cows has been AI'd at this stage. Now, some of the ones we would have bred for the first three weeks there, and then anything that we didn't um see come a bull and that should have been bulled would have been handled but um generally it was uh, a couple of them just got a shot of estimate just to to bring around and um there's uh, i think there was two cedars uh there's very there was no real dirty cows right and we would have uh just uh, treated any of them bear earlier in the year just to, we'd keep a record for any of the ones mainly it's the with very few hard calvins right it's just really the few cows with twins and all that might have had issues earlier in the year would have been treated before the breeding season started so i thought it was very interesting just the point you made there on ebi um you know you're breeding for high ebi but you're also focusing on the fertility sub index within the ebi um, just because you're an autumn herd you're not solely looking at milk and i suppose good fertility um will inadvertently give you uh, good milk production um, with the autumn calvers. Um, oh, absolutely. Yeah, we, like for the last few years now, we've been, uh, we find that um, it's really, it, if we can maintain sort of those three, four, and fifth lactation cows in the herd, that's really where we're getting our, our milk from. And even we would probably might perceive as sort of ordinary, ordinary enough looking cows. Our herd average there. Um, We'll be coming in with the mid- winter milking herd around seven and a half thousand kilos uh, um, average per year per cow. But uh, those average looking cows in the fourth, third, fourth, fifth lactation are easily doing eight, eight and a half thousand. And it can be ordinary enough looking cows, but they just from the having the, the fertility in the herd, they're calving and we're getting the full lactation out of them. It seems to be working well enough first and they're giving good production and with big focus on, on milk solids then as well, because obviously most of our payment is coming from the milk solids, even despite the fact that we're autumn calving. So it's really the same pool of bulls that when we're picking our spring breeding bulls, it's it's, it's the same pool of bulls that we're drawn from. So we really don't, we need a, a fertile cow sort of uh, that to produce. That's what we're looking for, really. And um, if we if we turn our attention now to the spring calvers, have you started calving yet at Johnstown Castle? Yeah, we started calving there. Our t- plan started have and would have been on the 1st of February so we had a few there just before not that many really just a, a, a three or four days before so we're really only a week or 10 days into the, the calving season at this stage our numbers are small obviously there with the you know we only have about 60 there to calve in the spring so we have um, I think about 80 19 calves so we're up you're getting up near I suppose 30 percent of them uh, there at this stage now and, um, and like what said, sort of numbers do you expect to calve say in February March um, of the 60? Oh, I've six. I think there's. I think uh, looking at uh, the, the the breeding plan there, I think there's only about four or five that are aren't due to calve there. So we'll we'll probably have four or five that'll drag into the first couple of weeks of April. But after that, they'll be all calved in February, March. Um, we'll have a good shot and calve there now by another week or ten days' time. Um, I'd expect that we'll have a 
uh, probably up and pushing up in two thirds and calf, then the, the rest of them will sort of trottle on along into into March, I suppose. So yeah, yeah. and and then for for these uh, spring calving cows, similar to the autumn uh, the autumn herd, you'll have them out to grass, um, you know, fr- from now really. Yeah, we have. Yeah, we were. Uh, d- d- their demand is obviously very low at the moment a lot of them are only freshly calved like uh, they're, they're getting about three kilos of concentrate and we'll probably try to hold that fairly consistent and we'll be happy if we can get them out so for the last we, we've been lucky enough with the weather over I, I, here in the, the last couple of weeks that we haven't got the, the rain that was forecast a lot of the time and conditions aren't bad so we have them out by day there for the, the last week or so um and they're, they're, they're probably eating four or five kilos of grass dry matter in, in that and We'll be sort of trying to get them out with the spring cabin herd. We'll probably try to get them out day and night or at least two bouts of grazing. They're coming into next week if, if conditions allow. Well, depending on, on on how we're moving through our spring rotation plan with the with, with the spring herd. And then with the autumn herd, they've only gone out yesterday. So um, they'll be, they're, they're very easily managed in terms of uh, uh, getting ground grazed off because we have a huge demand going out on that treatment. All the cows are calved and their big uh, appetite so that's great Aidan we look forward to catching up with you again in, in the in the next month okay thanks very much Emily. that's it for this week's episode of the Dairy Edge podcast my thanks to Brian Gary and Aidan Lawless for joining me on the show don't forget to subscribe on iTunes and for more information go to Chagas website at chagas.ie I'm Emma Louise Coffey join me next time for your Dairy Edge <laughs>